Okay, so when we look at The Last of Us, I think a lot of us are hit with how morally grey that it is. Joel's actions are questionable, Ellie ends up going down a dark path, and people have to do bad things to get by, but we can all understand why this is. No matter how dark things get with the protagonists, there is at least some debate in it, with even the ending of the first game being like, well I get it, at the very least. However, in the case of David, I don't think there's any point where you can actually sympathise with him. A devious and manipulative man, he attempts to groom Ellie into joining him in his cult. In both the show and game, we learn minor things about them, and in case you don't know, David's one of the main antagonists in both. I think he's been put in place to show that man is the worst predator of them all, and amongst this new world, he's managed to abuse people and do what he wants. David is far worse than the infected, and he even sees them as being something to admire. Before the world fell apart, he would have had to have moved silently, and likely would have evaded the law due to his manipulative abilities. Though he definitely twists situations to his benefit post-apocalypse, he has even more power because of the way the world is. He's taken his followers away from the overlooking guys of Fedra and isolated them far away from everyone else, in a habitat that not many people would venture to. He's very much built a cult around himself, and like most cult leaders, he's abused his power to allow him to carry out his dark fantasies. Describing himself as a man with a dark heart, we see how he's led his flock into a life of cannibalism, and that they've been shunned into silence even when witnessing abuse. Now in the show, we learn a little bit about his past, and discover that he actually used to be a teacher. Knowing what we know about him, this has an extra layer to it, as he could have used this role to prey upon people. This very much plays into why he likely became a preacher as well. These positions of power give him access to young girls, and it also means that people will listen to him and turn a blind eye to what he's doing. When all the issues happen with the Catholic Church, we discover that many people knew about it, but they just covered it up instead of actually damning the person committing the indefensible acts. Religious figures are often thought to very much be vessels for God, and thus in this position, few people question them. I think this is why David chose to become a holy figure, and due to what he says, I don't get the feeling that he's even religious, and instead he views the Cordyceps as the higher power. He's a charlatan, masquerading as the leader of a cause that he doesn't believe in because it makes him untouchable. At one point James questions that it might be God's will to let Ellie die, but we see his own choices overriding this so that he can get to her. Now David very much brings the perfect portrayal of his character to get what he wants as well. I think that both the show and game do an excellent job of painting him out as a very meek and meager character who's completely unassuming. When playing as Ellie, you end up fighting alongside him, and due to how valuable he is, I think many players will see him as a great ally in these moments. Hell, he even fooled me, and upon my first playthrough, I was thinking he seemed like one of the quote unquote good ones. Up until this point, we'd fought against Fedra, Bandits, and some of the worst people imaginable that were happy to kill a kid just to get an extra bit of food. David, on the other hand, seemed like he genuinely wanted to help Ellie though, and he even sent off his right-hand man to get medicine for her. As players, we're very much meant to see him as the people in his town do, and be on his side. However, the turn comes early on when he actually plays his hand slightly, and reveals that his men have had run-ins with Joel and Ellie in the past. Had Joel been in fighting shape, she wouldn't be out getting medicine for him, unless he wants to offer her something else away from him. In this world, most people are in it for themselves, and in the game, we even get the feeling from Joel that he's ditched those that have slowed him down. We saw this with Henry and Sam too when the run truck was chasing them, and on the whole, staying with someone if they're wounded is the exception and not the rule. David incorrectly assumes that Ellie's like this too, but getting someone away from their family is also a tactic that abusers use. Psychologists have outlined patterns like this before, and in toxic and abusive relationships, there tends to be some key characteristics. These involve getting the victim away from their friends and family, and thus they're more likely to stay with the person because they have no one else to turn to. In David's town, Ellie would very much be viewed as the enemy too. The stories of her and Joel will have circulated at this point, and I can't imagine that the townsfolk will take too kindly to her around these parts. Thus, Ellie will very much be stuck in a strange place that she doesn't know with no one else to turn to. David will be the only person that she has, and thus he'll be able to manipulate and abuse her without anyone stepping in to help out. It's a sad and sadistic plan that puts Ellie in the most danger that she's ever been in. Whereas she found a surrogate father with Joel, David is very much a dark version of that, and I don't think it's a coincidence that he refers to himself as that in the entry. We see as a girl named Hannah mourns her father who was killed by Joel, and David's done a similar thing to what he planned to do with Ellie. I think that she's very much used in the episode to show what could potentially happen with Ellie, and we watch as the congregation refuses to speak up, even though he's hitting her in front of them. 
It's likely that they would never speak up to him at all, and you really feel for the girl in this moment, and I don't think it's any coincidence that this interaction comes the night after he just met Ellie. This slap is very much him casting her to the side because he has a new target that he wants to control. Now at the start of the episode, they say it's too cold to bury her father, but it's possible there might be another layer to this. The ground being too cold to dig up sounds like a bit of BS, and it's possible they can't bury his body because they've eaten it. This would also mean that Hannah's ate her own dad, and that David was complicit in doing this. It's just got a creepy subtext to it, and the people just eat down on their meals without speaking up. They are just happy to have something to eat, and if it's a choice between a hot meal and speaking up and starving, then they'd likely rather go with the former. David has weaponized this, and often in cults, you will find behavior that fits along with this too. One of the first things that an abuser will do is also restrict food, as it will allow someone to control those below them. Nexium did it, R. Kelly did it, and pretty much every figure like this carries out something similar. We do know food is scarce too, so it might not be intentional, but potentially David chose for them to settle here because of that reason. There's also the fact that it's out in the snow, and thus anyone who tried to leave would have to deal with the environment too. So your choice is to stay there and be fed, or face the harsh frozen landscape that surrounds the town. I think all of these aspects are what makes David the most evil character in the game and show because of how devious he is. Appearing as a mild-mannered man, he's managed to manipulate people into thinking that he's not a threat, when in reality he controls every aspect of the life that people have in his town. If you put yourself in their shoes too, you can easily see why some have just chosen to stay silent, and he's preyed upon this weakness to mean that he can basically do what he wants. If they speak against him, they could be speaking against God, if they stop him it might mean they're unable to eat, and if they try and leave then they have to contend with what lies around them. They've already lived through Fedra and several raider attacks, and now just want some safety and security in exchange for silence. It adds so much complexity to the show, but either way, I think we can agree David's a sick and evil man. I think most people would rather face off against the infected than be stuck in a town with him as the leader, but he's used fear to control them. Masquerading as a religious man, he's tapped into people's fears, and he's used them as a way to control how they live. It's a harrowing thing, and had Ellie ended up stuck with him, then who knows what would have happened. His death scene is meant to be brutal for a reason, and seeing her cut away into him is done by the creative team to show just how evil he is. It's complete overkill, and yet you can definitely understand why his death is portrayed like this. In the end, he's one of the most evil characters I think I've seen in video games before, and the worst thing is that most players wouldn't have suspected a thing on their first run through. I think when making this video, something that stuck with me is just how much of this actually translates to real life. Things like clickers and bloaters don't exist in our world, but people like David do. They come across as kind and gentle souls, but lurking beneath them's a dark and evil side. Put in a position of power, they can destroy someone's life worse than an outbreak like this ever could, and in fact, it would make them more powerful. Without law enforcement and having people in vulnerable positions, means that they can thrive and get what they want. It's terrifying to think about, and I think it's a reason why David sticks with so many people long after they've finished the game. To me, he's the most dangerous character we come across, and he's a chilling and evil villain, with or without the infected. Now as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the character, and what you think about David in the shown game. Comment below and let me know, and if you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our video on screen right now. If you want to support the channel, then please join our membership program by clicking the link below. It'll give you early access to some videos, and we're also going to start doing some extra stuff that really, really pays you back for all your support. Hopefully, I see you over there, and without the way, thanks for sticking through this. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.